Hello and welcome to episode 37 of series 3 of Master League Story Mode. Now it is January the 1st. Headaches abound, I'm sure. Must have been a big night out in Bristol for Ian Holloway and his side. He'll be celebrating being top of the league as the new year bell is rung. And now we have the transfer window, which usually is a really exciting time. We love the January transfer window. It gives us a chance to uh, do some of the business we couldn't manage in the last window and maybe bolster our side. But forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't really think we need anyone. Or at least no one of the quality that we're able to sign. little reminder for those of you not 100% aware of the transfer rules. At the moment, this season, we can only sign players of 74 overall rated or below. Uh, so we'll take a quick look just to remind us at our transfer list. A lot of these players we already have signed. Dal being one of them, Amati being another. We've got Denea, Funes Mori, Just, Gomez. They're all players that we want to look for for the centre-back uh, centre position in the future. Um, one of the options we've got is activating the uh, the full transfer clause on Tom Davis. I'm not sure how you do that. Seems to be allowing us. That's That's really odd. I thought we had an option to buy to check back on that. Um, so we might do that, but actually I'm not 100% sure. We've got De Jong, who's a good replacement for him as the backup central midfielder, so he's not essential. Um, any other players in here that we might want to consider? Obviously, it'd be lovely to get Dicko back. What a player he was for us. He was a loanee in the first season. We couldn't quite afford to sign him in the last window. We decided, with the help from you guys, the commenters, that maybe it wasn't the right option, but I'm just going to put in a cheeky bid for him, see how much he would cost. Um, Grealish we've wanted to sign for a long time. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to sign him. One out of five, but we'll have a go. Um, we're not in a hurry to sign anyone. We've got nine million, as we said, but not necessarily bothered by any of these players. Adarabio from Man City would be interesting, but uh, yeah, he's nowhere near the quality of these centre-backs up here. Definitely St. Just. Gomez, I think Joe Gomez is the one we'd like to go for. St. Just as well is a good all-round centre-back. We can wait for next year for them. But nothing really that exciting. Uh, quick look at our team. The only person we could potentially say, sell is Gustav Engbal, but I'd fear the revolution of the Bristol City fans if that happened. They'd be storming the gates of Ashton Gate. They'd be storming the Ashton Gates. And they'd be looking for uh, Holloway's blood if he made that decision. Such a fan favourite. Such a firm, firm favourite with the fans. So other than that, not much we can do really. We haven't got a huge squad. Um, but it's a strong one. And obviously we're top of the league. So I don't think there's anything to do, but just keep cracking on. Oh, Tammy Abraham is back from injury. That's nice to have him as an option. And the scouts brought us back something. Let's see what that is before we get into our first game of this episode. Uh, it's Graven Birch. I think he's a Reading player, maybe. Yeah, Reading centre back. Yeah, I mean, he's a beast. I think we've had him come up before, actually. Worth considering. We'll add him to the list. He's 75 overall rated, so there'll be no problem with signing him next season. Uh, right, okay. So with that out of the way, let's get into the first game of the episode, which is another home game. We're at Ashton Gate. We had a mixed episode last episode. We uh, lost the first game to Crystal Palace. It's our first game that we've lost in a while. Then we bounced back against Sunderland, and it was a fairly convincing win. Now, it looks like Fred Friday's on a downward arrow, and he's a little bit tired as well. So straight back in the squad comes Tammy Abraham. It's Tammy and Nige up front. Darrell and Amati still improving. That's huge. And then Pack and Rossiter looking a bit tired. But no better options there. And Angelino's on a blue arrow, so maybe we'll look to have him streak down that left-hand side. West Ham are going to be difficult to play against. They've got Andy Carroll in the middle, who's a really, really strong header of the ball. And that is the understatement of the year. But they are, unfortunately for them, playing that slightly weird formation with, with wing-backs, but with no actual wing-back selected because it doesn't exist in Pez this year. So Dimitri Payet and Torre out on the right. They're going to have a lot of running to do, especially to keep up with Angelino. And that's where we want to hit him down the sides. I mean, whipping balls into Big Tammy. Hopefully we can get him back on the score sheet straight away after that unfortunate injury because of his glass ankle or glass knee or whatever. He's just made of balsa wood as far as I'm concerned. But he's a good player. We want him to do well. Let's get into it. Now, I don't like to talk smack about Pez. It's a game that I've loved and I do still love more than any other form of entertainment, especially on the PS4 or on any other console. Uh, but one thing that they do really need to put in next season, next year, is wing-backs as a position. Because it's really, really making some of these sides suffer. Maybe West Ham will be able to play okay with it. But having Payet essentially playing as a wing-back, with three at the back, but him as a left midfielder, I don't know if he's really going to do his defensive duties. So we'll uh, see how that pans out. 
Here comes Payet into Carolis. He looks back inside to Payet. It's fallen to Obiang. But, oh, Kieran Dow's in there. He's won that back very strongly. Roberta, first time ball. Kieran Dowell. Oh, he's caught in possession just as he was about to pull the trigger and the ball through. And now West Ham look to break with Obiang. That's a great ball out to Carellis. He gets ahead of Flint. But Amati's tracking that run there. Really strong play from him. You don't often know he's there, but he's always in that sort of area, just mopping up in front of the centre backs. Any problems, and he's always there. Roberta, little dummy inside, and then he finds Kieran Dow. Steps backside onto his left. Obiang gets an important foot in. And Amati again. Crunching tackle from him. The Bertha edge of the box hits it. Abraham, can he get to it in the box? He can't. Matthews beaten by Pyatt in the air. But Pyatt's header goes out for the first throw in the match. Matthews ball into Pack, who's got space to whip in at a ball. Tammy Abraham's got away from his man. And that is basic. Absolutely basic for Tammy Abraham. He's back in the side. And it's great to see him scoring. After what, five minutes? After a lengthy layoff. For another knee injury or ankle injury or whatever the fuck's wrong with him. And uh, that's that was the game plan for today. Put the ball into Big Tammy. Get his head on it. Obia. Good pass into Corellis. Dow comes across to try and deal with him. It's a ball into Andy Carroll but Flint's off his line. Like a rat up a drain pipe. And now Zayden Flint launching the counter. What's he got here? The final ball has to be a good one. Norvell gets back. It's a good header to prevent it going through to Tammy Abraham. West Ham stringing together some passes now. This is better from them. Noble, that's a nice ball into Payet, perfectly weighted. Chip ball into Andy Carroll, he turns, lovely ball into Ayu. His shot hits the post, and then Payet's there for the rebound. Oh, it's all falling apart here for Bristol City. What the hell happened there? Adam Matthews not pleased with his defence. Everyone switched off there. The ball into Carroll lacked pace. Ball into Ayu, that was a great header from him. And then no Bristol City defenders willing to react to that. Angelino, hands on hips. Adam Matthews, hands on head. Oh, everyone just gave up. It was just ball watching. Dimitri Payet with an open goal. He wasn't going to miss that. Well, West Ham back in it. And that's half time. Well, disappointing stuff, really. Nothing to write home from from either side. It was a pretty simple header. The defending was poor for both, really. Good header from Ayu to hit the post. And Payet was there for the rebound. But not a classic so far. Let's see if we can do a bit better in the second half. Our pass completion has been woeful, 72%, whereas West Ham have been very effective, almost 90% pass completion. And they've had more possession as well. We shouldn't. This shouldn't be happening at home, not on Bristol City's home turf. We're a passing side, and we need to show that in the second half. Rossiter closing down Ayu, does really well, but Ayu gets away from him. Now Noble's got space to whip a ball in, gets inside of Angelino. Can't make the cross, though. Can't make it count, and Rossiter can clear into Abraham. He tries to help it onto Roberta, but it's panic stuff here from Bristol. We need to take a breath, calm down, get possession back. West Ham bullying us. Oh, Angelina does well, but falls to Ayu somehow. Roster gets a foot in. Can't prevent it going out for a corner. West Ham putting the pressure on here. From set pieces, they've got a lot of big men. What can we do? It's Dimitri Pyatt to whip it in. We know he's a good set piece taker. Dow gets up. And Matthews, oh, 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 my word. My word, that was close. Finds Pack into Rossiter. This is better passing here. And there's space for Angelino, as we knew there would be. He puts a ball in looking for Roberta. Nigel Roberta, and he's fluffed that. He's fluffed his lines there, big style. He actually had a lot more time than he expected. It's a ding-dong battle here. At Ashton Gate, Kieran Dow can't win it back. Neither can Amati. Strong running from Andy Carroll. Good centre-forward play. Holds it up there. Allows others into the game. Mark Noble now into the box. Gets the shot away. That rebound could fall anywhere. And it does to Torre. Mika with an incredible save to keep Bristol in this game. Lovely attacking play there from West Ham. Little back heel there. The chip ball into Noble. Matthews couldn't get with him. Mika with a good save. And it's a double save from Mika to keep us in this one. But it's a corner now. Mika furious. Come on. 69 minutes gone. It's Dimitri Payet to whip this one in. A goal now would be awful. Mika again with a very strong hand gets it away but only as far as Mark Noble but Abraham Nick's in there. And now we've got men forward. We can break in numbers. That is an awful ball for fuck's sake Tammy. Straight swap here Friday for Roberta. Got the two big men up front. Tammy and Fred. Freddie and Tammy. Can we find something? Abraham got the first goal. Can he find another? Nice ball there from Dowell into Angelino. He's got space to run into here. 
looking for options in the box. Doesn't see any. Cuts back inside. Now Marlon Pack into Kieran Dowell. It's for the 1-2 with Fred Friday. Noble holding him up there. That cynical play from the central midfielder. He stopped the run. Referee didn't see it. Great. Great header there from Magnussen. And now Dowell. Can't quite get the pass away. Obiang's been up his ass as soon as he's had the ball every time today. But Amati wins that well. Time running out here at Ashton Gate. A late goal now would be a dramatic one. Friday the substitute. Finds Matthews making the overlap. He goes back to Daniel Amati. Inside to Marlon Pack. The ball's on to Abraham. He can't turn into a shooting position. Flint does really well there, but that's a mistake. Oh, and it's a horrible foul on the halfway line. Still West Ham have it. The referee's played advantage. It's a great ball looking for Carolis. Magnussen comes across and deals with it. Two minutes left now. Time running out. Matthews spreads it wide to Angelino. He gets the pass away into Rossiter. This is last chance. No, nope. last chance has gone for fuck's sake. No good. No good at all. Toothless. We were outplayed there at home. And that is not good enough. Our form is not good enough at the moment. And Ian Holloway, I'm sure, be voicing that in the changing rooms. 50% possession and only one shot on target. This isn't the Bristol City we know. Not at home. The Bristol City fans, I'm sure they don't really feel like they can be anything other than pleased with our performances at the moment. But that simply was not good enough. Main offenders, well, I'm going to have to say it. Kieran Dow did not have a good game. Neither did Nigel Roberta. And uh, that's a real shame because they've been looking great recently. It's another draw. They're becoming a little bit too regular at the moment, but it's still top of the league. Dow continues to improve. Excellent. As is Amati. We know that. Amati up to 77. That's huge. So we've got a nice long break now. We might have some negotiations to look at, but I think it's going to be more just out of general interest rather than actually anything we want to do. Dicko. Well, it looks like we could be dealing with him. Great to see him back in the side, wouldn't it? How much? 9 million. Yeah, I thought as much. I knew it would be a big, big sum. And that's out of our budget, really. We want to be saving this money for a centre-back when we have the chance. Oh, yeah, we can still do the option to buy. You just have to do it in here. So the option to buy, Tom Davis at 5.8 million. Mm, probably not. Probably not. Maybe. Let me know what you think. So Wolves have allowed us to negotiate. Take a little bit of money off the Dicko transfer. 8 million, though. That's still too much, even with 1.5 million knocked off. As much as we love him. 26 years old, he is the speed merchant that we need. We don't have anyone with the raw, explosive pace. We're not a quick side, really. Uh, and Dicko definitely added that to us, but I don't think so. Well, let me know what you think. We'll be spending a lot of the budget that we've saved for that centre-back. So, World Footballer of the Year goes to Cristiano Ronaldo. It's not surprising. One day, will that be Kieran Dow? Well, that's our plan. I think so. They're both imposing physical specimens, and I think one day Kieran Dow could be lifting that stumpy little golden ball. So here we are, second game of the episode, and it's Newcastle United. And, oh, we've had something come back from the scout. Let's take a quick look at that before we get into it. It's another home game. I'm sure the Ashton Gate fans will be, uh, they'll be wanting to see a response after the disappointing performance in the last. Nothing's come back from the scout that we'll be able to deal with next season, uh, which is a shame. Some really good people coming back. Vadonk, I know, is a high-quality youngster. He'd be amazing, but we're a long way off signing a 79 overall rated. What a dream that would be. And uh, 77, well, that'll be the season after. Van Aken's a big lad. Oh, they've got a really strong centre-back duo in St. Just and Van Aken at Heron Ben. Yeah, St. Just we can deal with and we'll be looking at him soon. Uh, well then, so let's get into it. As we welcome the other promoted side, Newcastle, who came up with us. As you remember, they finished second below us. In the league. Marlon Pack on a downward arrow. I'm afraid we'll have to drop him. It looks like De Jong's coming in for a rare start. Uh, we'll play him as an attacking mid. We're going to go balls out the bath. As we tend to do with De Jong in the side. He's on a downward arrow. Which isn't ideal. But uh, mm, what are you going to do? Well we could play Kieran Dow there. Drop him back. And then we could play. Uh, Big Nige. Second striker. And stick in uh, Tammy as well up front. Yeah, let's try that. A little bit, something a bit different today. Three strikers and Kieran Dowell in the midfield. It's a very attacking formation here. But we need to come back strong after the disappointing performance in the last. We want to do that by handing out a spanking to Newcastle. But they're a difficult side to play against. So this will be, I'm sure, not as easy as I've made it sound. So here we are back at the gate. Back at the gate to heaven, as the Bristol City fans call it. Oh, I don't know if they do. 
Um, let's not forget that the Bristol City nickname is the Robins. We don't mention that enough. What a lovely, lovely name that is. One of my favourite birds. What's your favourite bird? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> the worst audience participation question of all time. Let's get into it. Let's get away from that. Angelino's there to deal with it. Needs to make this one count. Good clearance. He knew there were no better options there. Friday gets the header on from Abraham. And Roberta back into Freaky Friday. Friday lets rip from distance. First shot of the game for Fred. And it's wide. The keeper didn't really even flinch. But it's good running there. With those three strikers, we've always got options. And if Dow can follow them up as well, those four running at defences are going to be a difficult proposition. Oh, that's really poor from Elliot. Tammy Abraham into the box. Just to square it back to Roberta. Oh, another goalkeeper error there. They can be so stupid sometimes, can't they? Kieran Dow over this one. The in-swinging Cora from Dow. Amati's there. Gets the header back across. Rossiter heads it back in towards goal. It's cleared off the line by another notable egg. John Joe Shelby. Flint gets across Mitrovic, but Mitrovic fires back with a shoulder charge of his own. And now Newcastle coming forward. It's a nice ball out to Stiber. Magnussen's come out of position to deal with it. It's into the box to Mitrovic. His shot is blocked by Matthews. And it's out for a corner. Great counter-attack there. Corner now to Newcastle. They've got a lot of height in the box. John Joe Shelby over this one. Voldemort whips it in. And it's straight into Mika. That's very poor. It's obviously a Horcrux or two down today because that was well below par. Jordan Rossiter slips it into Angelino. That's a great ball. Can Angelino whip a ball in? Abraham's there. It's punched away. Dowell can't win the header. It's out to Roberta. Now Rossiter again used to use Angelino. Whips it in. It's another good challenge from Yedlin, but he can only clear as far as Rossiter. He's got Richie with him. Just to slip it into Angelino again. There's another ball in. This time he's offside, for fuck's sake. Amati battling with Diarmi and he wins that well. Strong play from Desperate Dan. Now Fred Friday streaking forward. He's away from him. Bemba gets the shot in. Lascelles comes across and deals with it. But at the very last second, really powerful running there from Fred Friday. He looked like he should have been tackled, but he wasn't. Long ball, but Dowell's there and aware. He's playing slightly further back today than he normally does. And here is Kieran Dowell. Just a pace away from Diarmi. Does well there. Good footwork from Dowell. The back heel into Matthews. We've seen that one before. Tammy Abraham near post. And it's exactly the same as last week. I think it was Marlon Pack again. At least, I know it was Matthews this time. It might have been Matthews in the last game. It's a near post header from Tammy Abraham. He is our target man. He's good with his head. It's good to see him back in the start side and scoring those sort of goals. That's what we've got him in there for. Lovely play from uh, Kieran Dowell. Evades the tackle. Cheeky back heel. And that is a lovely... Lovely cross from Adam Matthews. He's so dependable in those areas. Whipping balls in at the near post. 1-0. Kieran Dowell. Dummett comes across. Does well to cut it out there. Flint through Mitrovic this time. It's a judge to be a foul. And Diami takes it quickly into John Joe Shelby. Now Dummett whips it wide looking for Richie. Angelino had that red very early. And Friday now brings it forward. Lovely ball into Roberto. Lays it off to Kieran Dowell. He's taken out there. But Roberta continues. Ball into Tammy Abraham. Oh, it's a lovely finish from Tammy Abraham, who's back in the side. He's back from injury, and he's back in the goals. Back on form. Tammy's back. Let's take another look at that. It was a really nasty foul in the build-up to uh, Kieran Dow. But look at these four attacking players all coming forward. Dow, Abraham, Roberta, Friday. That ball from Roberta was beautiful. He's playing in the second striker role today. He's slightly better when it comes to passing than both Abraham and Friday. So he slots in there a little bit more naturally. And that ball over to Abraham was beautiful. And the finish as well with the left foot. Ah, oh, much better. Newcastle under pressure here. Dumb it. Under pressure from Dowell. He's able to get it back to Elliot. And that should be the half. Yes, it is. 2-0. That's much better. Stats-wise, compared to West Ham, that's where we should be. 85% pass completion. 63% possession. That's the Brittle Bristol City we know and love. It's a shame we can't seem to do that in the first game of the episode at the moment. Let's see if we can keep it going. Roster under pressure. Gets the pass away. Good ball into Fred Friday. Oh, Rolando Aarons does really well. Coming back through the fridge. Fred the fridge Friday. Oh, but that's really poor. Now Tammy Abraham. Little chip ball looking for Roberta. Oh, it's fallen to him. And Nigel Roberta makes it four here. It's too easy. No, he doesn't. He makes it three. Huge mistake there in the play. 
But that's just awful. The pass under hit. Rossiter sneaks in. And this time Tammy Abraham turns creator. Mbemba misjudged that one almost comically. And it fell to Roberta. I'm sure wasn't expecting it. But Nigel finished well. Emphatic. Past the keeper. Into the bottom. Left hand corner of the goal. And with three goals up here. That should be good night. Sweetheart. Daniel Amati. Huge. But Mitrovic somehow gets it back there. Ah, oh, but Abraham once again defending from the front. Rebirth a little chip ball into Fred Friday. Takes it down. Hits it. Elliot palms it wide. The cells is there. He can clear into Dummett. Oh, it's a good chance there. Oh, Matthews has done really well. Still Matthews. Looks to put it into Abraham. Low ball into the box. Rebirth is there. And that really is four goals. And that is the game. More than sewn up. Rebertha benefiting again from the great passing from Tammy Abraham this time. And he makes it two for the day. Well, this uh, three striker thing seems to be working pretty well. But then if we want to play this, who do we drop in the midfield? Do we drop Pack or Rossiter? Do we go by form? I don't know. It seems to be working. Roberta doing pretty well in that second striker role. And there we go. 4-0 at home. That's much better. The Ashton Gate faithful. Much more pleased than they were last week. That was emphatic. 61% possession. Eight shots on target. Newcastle only allowed one shot on target. And Mika saved well. There was two. Wasn't there a double save at the beginning anyway? Pass completion much better. That's what we wanted to see. Tammy Abraham, bags man of the match. He did really well, as did Roberta. Dowell again struggling to get involved. Which is a shame considering he's on that dramatic improvement. Really we want him to be getting goals and assists at the moment. He's not been managing that. Since we dropped him slightly further back from that second striker role. Things haven't been going quite as well for him. Uh, maybe we'll change that in the next episode. Just to give him one final chance of a goal or something to uh, cap off his dramatic improvement. So 4-0. Lovely. Top of the league still. Only one point though. And once again, worth remembering, we're still only six points ahead of 7th place Everton. Everything could change in a second. We cannot afford to take our foot off the gas. Ian Holloway knows that. The whole squad knows that. They're used to running away with the league. They're used to leading from the top. They did that last season. Hopefully we can do it again. Well, even though he's not been playing well, Dow's still improving, dribbling, explosive power, ball control. So important to get all of those up to as high as they can go. That's what he does best in the middle of the park. Amati, 95 stamina. That's insane. Angelina and Rossiter as well. Still getting better. It's really encouraging. Roberta, protege. Nice. We've had some bids in for Dow, Pack and O'Donnell. I don't think we're going to be selling them, but I'll be curious to see how much we're offered. 10 million. Yeah, well, he's worth it. He is worth it. I don't think we can offer him a new transfer. We can't offer him a new contract at the moment because we've already offered him one. Um, Marlon Pack, 6 million, 10 million for Kieran Dahl. He's turned into quite a player. I think we got him for less than half that, if I remember correctly. And O'Donnell, we need to keep as our reserve keeper. Let's just take a look and see if in this game Dahl's still improving. He is. Wow, it's still going. Still going. That's amazing. I want to keep that run going for as long as possible. So there we go. Another mixed episode. I don't like getting another draw at the beginning. It'd be good to get off with a bit more of a bang. Having trouble getting started at the moment in these episodes. But the second game, as in the last episode, was huge. Great goals. Just poor play in some cases from Newcastle. Giving us the chances. But with our three striker formation, we were always going to get goals. So there we go. Have a great weekend. We'll speak again on Monday. I'll see you in a bit.